boy. Welcome back to another episode of Rocket Vlogs, ladies and gentlemen. In about 10 years, I've never ever once had an issue with West Systems epoxy. But on the one where the fillets are arguably more important than any other rocket I've ever built, I ran into this issue right here. These fillets have been drying for over 24 hours. And they're just, uh, they're just rubber. I don't know why. Um, logical thinking would dictate that maybe the pumps are bad or something on my wet system stuff. But right after I finished these, literally finished these up, I mix another batch of epoxy on this set and this set for another rocket project that's sitting back there with perfectly, killed, perfectly cured fillets and they're sanded and ready for paint. So I don't know what the difference is. The only thing I did different with these fillets versus those ones, these fillets each had one pump of epoxy and filler, and those ones all have two. And in fact, there's a set on here that I use two pumps and they're fine. So I don't know what the story is, but you shouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> oh boy. Um, in other news, I've decided to fly a K300 because I didn't know that that motor was back in production. I thought it was long discontinued. Yeah. That's not what you want. So right now, I'm just going to try to salvage this as best I can. I'm going to see if maybe some denatured alcohol on here will help me get this stuff off. And uh, basically we're starting over. Um, I'm hoping I can dig these soft fillets out because these ones are fine. Um, we're going to have to glue this fin back on, which is going to be a little bit difficult to align properly because the fin alignment guide won't fit on over these fillets. But, uh, yeah. Alright, so, there's no sanding it, there's no dissolving it. I've just been scraping it with an X-Acto knife, which is a really good way to get cut. And coming from the automotive world, I know that these gasket scrapers with razor blades in them are pretty good. So, that's what we're going with. Um, I'm going to pour some denatured alcohol to dip the blade in. Because for some reason... I'm convinced that's going to help. Even though I don't really have any basis of thinking there other than denatured alcohol thins this epoxy out when it's not cured and clearly this isn't cured. Making pretty quick work of it though. Um, I found that once you get the soft gooey stuff off, you can sand it pretty easily. Just for demonstrative purposes, I left all the epoxy I had to get out there for you. Probably took me about an hour. I got lucky enough that uh, even with those that good set of fillets still on there, I can get the fin guide on just enough to line this fin up again. So uh, the scraper made it pretty easy. I'm lucky that it wasn't harder than that, I feel. Uh, it, I, it could have been a lot worse. That could have been hours and hours of sanding and dremeling and trying to get it. I still want to re-sand everything before we do the fillets again. I guess I'm just going to do two pumps of epoxy for the external fillets this time because that is the, literally the only variable that was different. Um, I don't know. I had to stretch it pretty thin with one pump to get those fillets done. And then I immediately did two pumps for the rocket that's back there. And they dried and cured fine at the exact same time as these ones. So whatever 
Uh, it all cleaned up, so we're okay. The tube's been sanded and prepped again. Believe me, I meticulously searched to see if there's anything left in there. So I'm going to make myself a little uh, reference for the edge again. So I know where to put the tip of the fin. And we are back to square one. For reference, here's the other fillets that I did at the exact same time as the ones on the minimum diameter. So, like I said, the only variable there, oh, it's probably still zoomed in, huh? No, I don't know. The only variable is that I did two pumps of epoxy instead of one, but there's just a quick little update video for you. The fin is glued back on with five minute epoxy and uh, I've got a new order of silica coming in in a couple days. So we'll give her another try. All right, recovery mode initiated. I didn't do very well documenting this, but I pulled it all off like you guys saw. We did new fillets, they're dried. I've sanded them to shape, beveled everything up really nicely. Um, my Rock Forum post, Tony A, I don't know how to pronounce his last name for sure. Alcoser, I think is how you pronounce it. But uh, he was concerned about the presence of small bubbles in the epoxy. And I think a lot of the appearance of bubbles is the filler itself, but I do think there is a good amount of bubbles in West Systems Epoxy. I've come across that issue before. So they are very microscopic and these are on there pretty good. So I guess uh, only time's gonna tell how that works out for us. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw a little filler in just to level out some low spots and then. All right, according to my scale, cutting out well, I cut four inches, but I saved half an inch of it so I would have a vent band for my head end dual deploy setup. You saved 34 grams on that cut. And uh, every little bit counts, right? Not to mention shortening it helps a lot with the drag profile and raises the simulated altitudes a good bit. There she is in all her glory. Before sanding the fillets and before cutting the tube down, I was at 740 grams, now we're at 691. I believe puts us under a pound and a half before paint. We gotta keep it around two-ish to 2.2-ish pounds to have it at the Rash Aero optimum weight. And this is without recovery gear or electronics in there, but all that stuff's pretty light. So I'm pretty, in, pretty optimistic in thinking it'll be around two pounds with paint on it, which uh, means with the regular closure on the K300, which uh, by the way is what I decided to go with, a lot more tame and a lot more altitude um, should do about 22,000 feet with the tail cone retain or the tail cone closure on there it simulates like 24 but I didn't do any high altitude paperwork for Airfest so uh, I can't go over 23 so uh, we're gonna fly the regular closure as long as it comes back next year we'll do some high alt paperwork put the, uh, the mellow yellow L in there and see if we can't get over 25 out of it yeah sounds like a good time both motors simulate to about Mach 0.6, so 1.6, sorry. So no Mach 2 breaching, um, relatively tame for a minimum diameter flight. So now I'm just gonna go out there and uh, use some of this epoxy-based filler primer and just put a little coat on pretty much, I'll do the whole fin can, or just around the fins, but just to see what we need to do with the fillets, I know there's one low spot I'm gonna wanna fill make sure there's no pinholes or anything like that get everything wet sanded smoothed out before we put some paint on it and then uh then we just gotta figure out the electronics and we're pretty much ready to go all right i've already shown you guys this trick but i cut myself a little altimeter bay vent band set the tape up so you slide it on it goes where you want it to then you let the epoxy tack up a little bit and you take the tape off and then you got really clean lines and a really well bonded little piece there it's looking like uh, the filling effort's gonna be pretty minimal. It looks pretty dang good. There's some bubbles in the primer there, but uh, I did lay it on pretty thick, so it's bubbling up a little bit where there's some low spots probably, but we'll fix it. Thank you guys for tuning in to yet another episode of Rocket Vlogs. The minimum diameter is back on track. All the fins are properly attached with properly cured epoxy. Uh, for those wondering what I did differently, I bought new pumps and uh, I'm like Jim Jarvis recommended, I weighed the epoxy as the pumps were putting it out. Interestingly enough, the new pumps were pretty much dead on, so I, the hardener pump on my old set was pretty crusty, so 
I, I think that was more, where most of our problem came from. Like I said, for some reason, if you did two or more pumps, fine. But if you tried to do just one, it wouldn't have any part of it. At any rate, thank you guys very much for watching. Check out rocketvlogs.com for merch and uh, rocketvlogs.square.site if you want to buy the full LDRS video ahead of time, though there's only one more installment left here on YouTube. Uh, even if you're not buying any merch, I really appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, hit the little bell, all the YouTube things. I will see you guys at Airfest and probably in videos before then.